it is with great pleasure that I introduce Professor Shomo Shamai. He really needs no introduction to anyone who is remotely interested on information theory topics. Uh, his reputation, illustrious reputation, is world renowned. Professor Shamai received his education from Technion Israel Institute of Technology, where he has been senior research engineer and distinguished professor, and is the William von Diller Professor of Telecommunications since 1986. He's an IEEE Fellow, a member of the Israeli Academy of Science and Humanities, and a foreign associate of the US National Academy of Engineering. Very relevant to this event, he is the recipient of the 2001 Claude Shannon Award, as well as many other very prestigious awards that it would take far too long to enumerate. In 2010, he received the Thomas Reuters Award for International Excellence in Scientific Research, and he's also listed in their 2014, the world's most influential scientific minds. He has served as associate and executive editor for the Shannon Theory of the IEEE Transactions on Information Theory, and has also served on the board of governors of that society. His research interests encompass a wide spectrum of topics in information theory and statistical communications. Again, it's a grand honor, and please, Sholomo, join us. Thank you, thank you really so much for the most kind, I feel a little overly kind <laughs> <laughs> introduction, Ronaldo. So, the previous talk make, made it much easier on me, at least on the start. So whatever I'll try to, to do, in, indeed, just to give a short outlook on all the new things in information theory with focus on simple models of where, where do they go. So starting with this monumental paper by Shannon, which was, the way it was called, it, so it was a mathematical theory of communications, and at the time, not that clear how practical it is. Today, it's a fundamental theoretical and practical tool with emphasis on practice. Just to put whatever we heard in the previous talk, just to combine source coding, channel coding, and separation principle on the Gaussian setting with formulas. So Shannon gave us not only what is the rate of reliable communication in this model, not only what is the reliable, reliable communication, but also what can we achieve if we allow error probability of the detector. Just putting the separation theory with the 59th expression of the, of the, of the binary <coughs> noisy source coding result. And they, of course, taking demanding reliable communication, taking, taking the bandwidth to the limit, we have the result mentioned by Irving Jacobs, the minimal EB over N0 watt, which is needed for reliable communication. But as we said and mentioned here, it's much more than that, only in engineering, control, network, complexity, mentioning also Kolmogorov of yesterday, storage devices, which today you know, capacity and the way to, to address them Secrecy in terms not only what secret, but information embedding, stealth communication, and even circuit design, if we look closely. And beyond this field, beyond our field, we see statistics, mathematics, physics, economic, biology, linguistics, that Shannon himself was interested in, and this very important paper that was presented, the bandwagon, for example, the logarithmic formula applies for the Gaussian model. Don't overuse it. Don't use it. It has nothing to do with general models. Just Gaussian has nothing to do. SNR has nothing to do in general. 
like we heard even here. So, back to communication. And unlike just not that remote future, where the problem is, was how to do things. What to do, it's clear. I want an FM transmitter, <laughs> FM receiver, if we mentioned World War II. How do I imp implement it with the, with the radio? Well, no transistor, how? That was the problem. Today, it's just the opposite. What to do? So theory becomes more much more important. And the information theory not only gives you the way of what to do, but what is optimal to do, and sometimes, sometimes even says how to do it. What is ultimately best to do, and sometimes imply, implies how to do it. That alone, the coding idea of randomness that was not, though known, the direction was geometrical structure, only in the 90s returned back, though the work of Gallagher on the TPC. Okay, so let's leave that and go to very simple models, just linear Gaussian model. Here we have it. Y, the output, X, the input, H, the channel matrix, B, the sparsity, zero, one matrix of what affects the, from X, what affects A, what, what Ys are effective which is the measure control matrix. Plus Gaussian noise, such a simple model, really, almost trivial. Let's see what, the, what this one gives. And the references I, uh, the references I will have is only, only tutorial surveys, nothing, not the original references. So starting with the MIMO setting. Of course, MIMO setting, here we have Sitting here, every teletar for skinny. No need to speak too much, actually. Let us not remember. Maimo was invited here when? In 1702. Brandenburg Weiner. So, what if they use that for cables? Maimo? Ma Maimo. <laughs> much more complicated. Maimo with ISI. Brandenburg Weiner, 72. Let us not forget that. And massive mammal, the inventor Thomas Zeta is here with us. Connection, <coughs> not only that, ISI, intersimple interference channel, here they are. Just H should be a top of its matrix. Classical. We have statistical tool physics. Stat very strong statistical tools of physics, the replica mode method uh, is applicable here. Compressive sensing, classical. It's exactly the matrix B that controls compression, uh, the, the compressive part of the signal, the matrix A of the output. And there are many works cited, I, I won't go. And even exact expressions, exact I mean Surpassing replica. Replica is very nice technique, but not rigorous. At least hasn't been proved. Even exact expressions sometimes can be written very recently. That's not the end. Okay. For example, for example, Spread spectrum, we have heard spread spectrum. Here we are. Spread spectrum with what? H, it was the, the spreading sequences, random or not random, direct sequence spread spectrum, this is the mode. We can very analytically address, address the, the difference between separate, joint multi-user decoding, separate decoding in an analytical way. You want sparse code multiple axis, now modern. NOMA, non-orthogonal multiple axis techniques. Special cases of that. Whatever you, almost, and this is a simple model, don't, don't, don't forget. Broadcast, downlink. So, 
X is the transmitter, the separate components and wire different receiver cannot cooperate. Broadcast channel has been dealt with. One of the few examples of a general broadcast channel that is not degraded and still solved to the end. We know the capacity region, and it brings up the gelfand pinsker formula in terms of dirty paper here. This is the optimal way to go. How about cellular? Up and down links. Intercell cooperation. WLAN. Point to point MIMO we've mentioned. Practical implications. Chance state information. How important is it? Maybe, maybe some models. The, un the lack of exact chance state information of precise Child state information may collapse the thing in terms of degrees of freedom. Just collapse the dimension, the mime of thing. Or non coherent communication, as Hochwald Marzetta showed. You have many antennas, no point for that, that model to use more than one. Look at the conclusions. Massive MIMO, we have already mentioned. There's not, nothing to discuss too much here at this place on that. And that is not the end. How about cross-layer information theoretic design in that model? Combining queuing, routing of physical layer, cooperative networks, relaying, collocated users, receiver cooperation, cognition. All there are works on that. Nothing is cited here because of the time constraint. Distributed transmission and reception, feedback strategies, and cloud now, big, big word, cloud radio access networks, CRAM. Also, within this model, I said only tutorials are, uh, are cited here on surveys. Network coding, we heard. What about noisy network coding? Actually, if you look at the expressions, Noisy network coding pops up as a classical information theoretic notion that appears verbatim in this work before the notion, before network coding was, was actually coined. And Gerhard is here with us in that work. That's exactly the expression. You look at the expression, that's the same thing. A very, very same thing, classical information theory. And how about interference mitigation? We are using to actually play with the resources, actually distribute resources. Resources that time, frequency, space, MIMO, many antennas. It's not the end of the story. Interference alignment distributes has more into that. Like, you know, starting with the Diophantine approximation theory. See, Greek mathematics is very practical. Going through Rene information dimensions that are used for that. And uh, as we mentioned, classical models, many, many works. Here again, mention a, a tutorial FNT paper on that way. Vince here on physical layer information theory security. So, if this model is so interesting, as we've seen, covers almost any, anything that we like, this simple model, it will be interesting to know this relation between, maybe interdisciplinary in a way, relation between signal processing, minimum mean square error, and mutual information in general. X is not necessarily Gaussian. Still, we have here an equality, not bound, between minimum mean square error of estimating X and the mutual information here written in the most general form as the expectation of the <coughs> ratio between measures. And uh, this is the result by Gorsham Iverdu. And uh, it has quite, quite a number of 
implications. Just you see, using that and understanding that for infinite SNR you have the signal itself. Here is the connection between regular entropy in terms of minimum is with uh, differential entropy, which looks something very different. No, something with some, some. Let's go further. Gaussian example. X is Gaussian. What do we have? Immediately the connection between the classical log determinant formula and the well-known way before MMSC expression for estimating Gaussian vector from a Gaussian observation. How about continuous time? We can also have the, this expression in continuous time. And here is the connection. This is mutual information, the derivative with respect to SNR. With respect to the uncausal MMSC, what do I mean uncausal? You want to estimate the signal here. You look at all the measurements from the infinite past to the infinite future. The causal relation was known, result by Duncan. Result, as we see, a result by Duncan. So here is mutual information. We have a relation between causal and non-causal estimate. An open problem in filtering theory it has nothing to do with information theory. Open problem for decades. Solved via an information theoretic tool. Let's try to exemplify that for Gaussian inputs, continuous processes. Here we have the classical 42 winner MMC, MMC relation, which probably was classified because of the radar, uh, radar uh, implications, was out in 49. And here is the 49 Shannon formula that we heard in the previous talk for, for the general spectrum. The relation immediate, just the integral. That's all. I am MBC. Here what we have. So the intuition is, is there. Let us leave that and go back to the discrete model. Very nice. Point to point communication. We are now in network, so. We should really step back a little. How about codes? Codes, we, we heard codes. What do we say about codes? Optimal codes, we know, what's this? Yeah, the, rela the relation how MMSC of the optimal code should behave, MMSC of an optimal code, it should behave like that. Meaning, the MMC of an optimal code behaves for lower SNR that you cannot decode. It's like there is no structure in it. You cannot use the structure of the code, helps nothing. And then, a threshold effect, it gets decoded, MMC zero. Error probability goes to zero. How about practical? Okay, optimal code, we know it's not that simple. How about practical DPC and practical ideas? Exit chart, extrinsic information that we, for iterative decoding. What are the implications of IMMSC here? One thing is the area theorem, and the, here are others. We have here Rudy with us, Rudy Rubanke. And another thing, if you look at good codes, they behave like that threshold. But we want the, the the chart to be, you know, you build up information to behave something like that. So you cannot use good codes as component of turbo codes. Exactly as the turbo codes inventor found. Even the K equals seven convolutional codes were too complicated. You see it from here, the intuition. The models are very bad. Still point to point. How about interference? I communicate with Michel, I, I introduce interference to Marcos. What do we do? How do you control interference with this approach? Controlling interference, fine. How do you define interference? And here we have the classical interference channel, even the Gaussian, still open, unfortunately. 
end. What do we do here? Say you, the interference that you inflict on somebody who is not interested in your message but gets interfered by it is by what is the MMSC that he can find from this thing. And so I want to optimize mutual information to my own receiver, to the receiver that is interested in the message and minimize interference here. The idea also can be put, and in fact, in fact, here is the, the problem. You want to maximum mutual information and control the interference where the control factor is better. And once you realize what's going on with physical tools, we mentioned physics here, on superposition coding, that's uh, no, well, work by Merhav Gua and myself. The behavior based on physic, physical, uh, statistical, physical ideas, actually it makes it easier to solve the problem and the solution appears in this boosting former PhD student of mine and myself that indeed superposition coding is optimal for this, this problem, optimal. Not optimal for the general interference challenge, optimal for this very problem. So it gives intuition how to act. Actually, it motivates the idea of using Hanko Bayash. While using mutual information as an inter in interference factor does not. The result then is much simpler. Bandi Miral Gamal, but much simpler. It doesn't have the, the, physical, the physical interpretation of what to do. If we go to K interference, I'll say this can be confusing. No, if you do it right, it's not confusing. So let's come to the end. There is also, there is also a challenge. We know how to solve for infinite n. What about n equals 1? It's just simple. My conjecture, the optimal input is discrete, though the chance goes. So let us, we mentioned Shannon and heard what Shannon did. Shannon did something else as well. That's the extra time. Approximation theory. David says here, here I mentioned some reference of David. Very nice tool because we don't know how to calculate capacity. By approximation theory, we get the feeling what should be done at least for highest enough degrees of freedom. Shannon actually did it for the child. When, here is the, the writing, unpublished. When? Before the 48th paper, actually. Before that. Here is the Shannon 48th paper. When appeared in the, where is it? On October 48, this is March 48. March 48 appeared in this collected web. Here it is. The approximation theory. How did he approximate? How? Actual, on a point-to-point -point communication with uncoded communication with Stibitz codes. What is Stibitz codes? It's gray codes. Stibitz probably thought about that before. What can we do? Here are the expressions connected to the IMBC idea without mentioning that. Here is Shannon. Here with Approximation and coded modulation gives you this before the 48th paper. Okay, so let's close up. We played with ideal models like the interference, but forgot the message to the interference child, but the interference we inflict. So we put everything back. I am MSC and a recent work with, with Ronit and Vince here. We managed to show the costa point, the costa corner point, that is the capacity point. Polyansky and Wu did it as well with a different, more direct method. But here is the power, the strong power of IMMSC. And with that, to conclude, I would say that the issue now, it seemingly we have a mature thing, seemingly. 
Why seemingly? Because of the case of that, not that remote past. When the, the, it was how to do. Now we lack the basic theoretical results because we can implement almost anything you tell me. So we are behind. The theory is behind. We don't know many, the solution to many network problems. Network, even the broadcast channel could save us. It's not at all solved. By the way, last word, the broadcast channel, Shannon, although not mentioned, yes, he knew about the broadcast channel. And in the notes that Jim Messi took in a seminar, it appears not only two users, separate messages and a common message. Another fact was there, the SOS message. And not just one user detects it. Shannon, you're about it. Thank you.